call the meeting to order of the Johnson County Community College Board of Trustees for June 2016. Please uh, help me start the meeting with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our first item of business is roll call and recognition of visitors. Okay. This evening's visitors include Dr. Mickey McLeod, Kathy Anderson, Dr. Roberta Eveslage, and Ron Contino. I think we have a couple more student visitors who, who got here. We just got our photo taken, so we'll see them during the awards. Uh, awards and recognitions, Dr. Sopcich. Uh, Trustee Muse would like to pass that on to um, Andy Anderson in his last, last official meeting. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm delighted to introduce Mark Cowardin, who has some awards uh, to present to some uh, students for sustainability. Um, uh, yeah, you have to go over there. Uh, I could go over there too, but uh, we'll see. Uh, and uh, the sustainability uh, awards, the mark that you see on campus, uh, one piece has been recently restored from a tornado. Um, uh, personally restored, anyway. Uh, thank you, Mark. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm Mark Cowardin. Uh, Professor of Art, um, and uh, I've done a project last, well, we've done it three times now, this is the third time, uh, kind of a collaboration between the Center for Sustainability, the Student Sustainability Committee, uh, and my Sculpture Two classes. Uh, so we, we built a competition where my students, um, all of my students in the class, built a proposal for a sculpture that would be on campus that would deal with sustainability either through repurposed materials or conceptually. Um, and sometimes both, in most cases, um, both. Um, so two of the students who uh, were successful in that endeavor this semester, this last spring, uh, whose pieces are on campus now are here. Um, um, Alex Anderson, right? Yes. And Megan Stroll. Uh, they both have sculptures on, on campus. I don't know, I haven't done this before. I don't know how much information you want me to give, but I'm presenting them to you for recognition. And how about if we have each of them tell us a little bit about your sculpture? Um, and I first should introduce you as Andy Anderson's nephew. That's, that's correct. Right? <laughs> and also the winner of the League of Innovation, 19 community colleges that we're part of. You won the top, the best in show, which sounds like a dog show, and I know this wasn't. <laughs> best in show award, same, you know. first time in the history of Johnson County Community uh, College, actually, I believe. Actually, it's the second time in three years that one of our students has won best show. <laughs> so, I'm not and I was going to get to that. I have a catalog oh, okay. here. Um, the work uh, that I proposed and created for the campus, uh, I titled Five Mass Viewing Device. It uses uh, all repurposed glass and steel from, uh, from here on the campus. Uh, the steel used to be the uh, baseball uh, stadium risers, I believe, and the glass used to be in the computer desk that someone decided they didn't like anymore. And um, so I built these five very tall vertical uh, mass, <coughs> which branch out and uh, on the ends of them have these panes of glass uh, in frames that tilt and and uh, are angled in various configurations so that when you move around the site uh, that I chose, um, it, based on your line of sight and the reflections it provides, as well as the continuously changing light, it represents your experience of the site in a way you otherwise wouldn't um, see uh, wi without that based on um, the direction you're looking. So for example, you'll have a reflection of like an upside down horizon almost in some of them as you're moving around behind you while you're looking over the terrain of an entirely different area. So the idea is that you experience your environment in a new way and it draws your attention to, to the site in that sense. Mm -hmm. Where is it located on campus? Uh, out next to the college farm um, in that sort of drainage ditch area. <laughs> <laughs> Some further recycling. <laughs> okay, Megan? Megan. 
I did not know I was going to be talking in front of people today. <laughs> a little unprepared. Uh, my piece is made from uh, steel I found in a junkyard, an old table, an old door I found, and it just like represents like the good or the harmful choices that we make. And if you guys have walked past it, it is starting to break down. But that, that was the purpose of it, was that like, you know, the wood is gonna deteriorate and fall down while like the steel and aluminum still hold their shape, you know? Like some choices are long lasting, you know? But my family hasn't seen it yet, so I'm gonna go like try and fix it and then I'll let it deteriorate. <laughs> but my, my family has to see it first. Uh, but yeah. Thank so you. Okay. And I was going to say one thing about the League for Innovation. Uh, yeah, this is the 30th annual League for Innovation Student Art Competition. Um, and every one of the board member schools, 19 schools, have five artworks that go represent each college. And so, just so happens that these two students were both uh, part of the five that we had representing us. Uh, so that I'm proud of them for that as well. But then, yeah, Alex's piece won Best in Show in the competition. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. I might identify the other three students uh, that were representatives of, of the college. Laura Averill, Kyle Kemper, and Edward Teichman uh, were also presented to the League of Innovation. And you are welcome to step out of the meeting at your leisure. Uh, don't feel like you have to stay. Uh, you may have other things that you'd rather do. Uh, college lobbyist report, we will not. <laughs> Absolutely fine. College lobbyist report we will not have today. We we'll move on to the committee reports. The first item, uh, audit committee. I'll just report that the audit committee minutes are in the board packet at pages one and two. We reported on the committee meeting uh, last month. So we'll move on to human resources. Trustee Ingram. Absolutely. The human resources committee meeting for June 6th was canceled. Uh, but we do have several recommendations. The HR committee has reviewed the recommended updates to the probationary period policy. The proposed updates will lengthen the standard probationary period to 12 months for employees new to any applicable, applicable excuse me, uh, regular non-temporary position. Mr. Chairman, is the recommendation of the HR committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the college administration to approve the proposed amendments to the probationary period policy as shown subsequently in the board packet, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded to the, adopt the recommendation of the Human Resources Committee and the College Administration. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor say yes. 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 Those no. Yeah. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. The HR Committee has reviewed the recommended deletion of the special exceptions by job classification policy originally adopted prior to 1994 and the proposed adoption of an updated overtime compensation policy. The first four sections of the special exceptions by job classification policy are duplicative of content currently addressed in other policies. The fifth section is recommended for updates to clarify the calculation of hours worked for the purpose of receiving overtime. Additionally, the fifth section is recommended for transfer to a newly titled overtime compensation policy. Again, uh, it is the recommendation of the HR committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the college administration to approve the deletion of the original special exceptions by job classification policy and adoption of an updated overtime compensation policy as is shown subsequently in the board packet, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded to, to revise the policies and shorten the name by 40%. <laughs> is there any discussion? <laughs> If not, all in favor say yes. 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 Those no. <clears throat> Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. That concludes my report. Learning Quality Committee, uh, Trustee Cross. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. The Learning Quality Committee meeting on June 6, 2016 was canceled. Uh, items were sent to the committee electronically for consideration. Details can be found subsequently in the consent agenda of the June 16 board packet. Uh, and then there, the agreements noted below will be brought forward for approval through consent agenda uh, today here at tonight's meeting. Um, specifically, there's a curriculum and program additions and modifications made with respect to the 2016-2017 Kansas Core Outcomes Group and then an affiliation uh, agreements, uh, various affiliation agreements were in the packet. Uh, Mr. Chair, I also wanted to note I attended a, uh, 
ACCT uh, conference this week, uh, supported by the board and the, uh, the administration on uh, safeguarding campuses, uh, mostly focusing on the active shooter scenario and then what happened at Virginia Tech and at Umpqua, although various other catastrophic events were discussed. I I'm happy to report in a cursory uh, manner that I'm thrilled with uh, our emergency response plan and uh, having it in place. I'm gonna meet with staff uh, next week, including uh, Chief Russell and Vice President uh, Larson to give a more thorough report next week. But I think that we are in pretty good shape. Everybody always has something they could work on. Um, but uh, it was a wonderful conference and thank you to the board and to the, uh, the administration for supporting my attendance. So. Thank you for taking the time to do that. Um, Next item be the management committee report. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Trustee all right. Ingram. That Trustee. is just fine. No, 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 not a problem. Um, just having been on the board of trustees for a short period of time, one of the concerns that was brought forward in learning quality when I first began um, was the Higher Learning Commission um, credentialing requirements um, on this campus and also for college now. And since we did not meet, I asked Dr. Anderson to at least address that before he leaves and kind of give us an update on that as well as um, placement testing, right. specifically the AccuPlace or just so that right. we would hear. I thought you suggesting you can't leave until you fix it. Yeah, that would be correct. <laughs> We're about, if it's almost all wrapped up, it, yeah. it's really <laughs> exciting. Uh, and if it isn't, well, we'll talk to Mickey soon. <laughs> um, actually, the uh, college now, uh, the issues that we have with our high school faculty and, and uh, on campus faculty in fulfilling the HLC credentials. Uh, are the same issue, frankly, they're being faced with the entire uh, Higher Learning Commission, um, all the schools. Uh, we, we're in, I think, very good shape at this point. Uh, last April, to deal with the college now, our high school faculty first, uh, last April, all the high school district level coordinators uh, received an Excel spreadsheet identifying the credential status of all their faculty that are teaching in college now. So the deans reviewed all the transcripts uh, that, from all those faculty uh, to see what who, who were lacking uh, uh, credentials and what they needed to do to fulfill those. Uh, in May, the, the JCCC College now liaisons, uh, in each of the divisions there are college faculty who meet with the high school faculty in their respective uh, disciplines. Uh, they've met with them to follow up and, and cover and answer questions about their credentials if they need uh, additional work. Uh, and I believe by now nearly all the college now liaisons have completed contacting their assigned faculty. Uh, occasionally, even, even just this week, there are a few high school faculty that have submitted uh, further uh, um, uh, diploma work or credential work uh, that, that, that are still being looked at, but basically they've all been contacted by now. Um, perhaps the most important thing immediately is that at this time, all the college now faculty are, are good to cover the 2016-2017 school year. So any faculty member uh, in the high schools who are teaching college now classes are good for this coming academic year. The new H HLC requirements will come into effect the subsequent year in 2017. Um, and the college uh, now faculty uh, who do not have the approved credentials will be expected to submit a plan by December of 2016, this coming December. Um, we are applying, the, co the college is applying for a five-year extension that HLC has, has uh, allowed uh, us to do uh, that will provide those faculty who need, high school faculty who need additional time uh, to continue their work and complete their credentials. Uh, that application uh, I just re received uh, actually a couple days ago, Laura Lee Stevens has completed that. I wanna thank her for tracking down all those credentials and making sure that we have all that data. Uh, and we'll get that submitted actually before I leave this month. So that'll go into HLC. Uh, they'll be receiving these extensions from probably every college in, in the HLC system. I'm not sure how they'll get them, how fast they'll get the answers back to us, uh, but we'll have our uh, uh, application in, uh, and, and that should be pretty much, uh, uh, you know, uh, pro, pro forma, they, they should approve that. Um, that. That extension, again, will give those high school faculty uh, time to get their credentials in order if they choose to continue teaching in the program. Um, in addition, and, and this is something we just discussed actually today uh, with the Board of Regents, um, the Regents schools have provided, are trying to, to better pre prepare, better provide 
graduate credits for high school faculty and actually uh, faculty on the college campuses who may need work. And there's now a website uh, on the KBOR uh, website uh, under concurrent enrollment faculty qualifications. Uh, and we'll be sending that link out to the high school faculty uh, that will identify programs at Regent universities that will help them attain their credentials if they need help. Uh, they're allowing the high school faculty and, and college faculty at the various community colleges um, to avoid, they won't have to take the GRE in order to take graduate credit to meet those, those needs. Uh, so it'll simplify that process. Uh, and that's something that uh, we've been working on uh, through the regions for the past year, and that website is now up. Uh, I, I want to thank Emporia, Pittsburgh, uh, Fort Hayes. Uh, well, all the region schools have, have, have set some, uh, some programs out there uh, that, that should help. Uh, so in short, I think for the Higher Learning Commission, the credentialing, um, you know, there, there are some faculty who will need to to extend their work. They need to have a master's in 18 hours in the field. Uh, but on the whole, I think we're in pretty good, uh, pretty good shape. And for this coming year, uh, we, you know, we're, we're good. Yeah. How we, many, how many college now faculty are affected for us? I don't have the Excel spreadsheet here. Um, Ballpark. Probably, probably over a third have some work they need to do, which is a significant number. Um, uh, many of them have, most of them, well, they all have a master's, frankly. Uh, what, and frank, frequently what would happen, high school faculty would get their master's in an education in higher ed, uh, and instead of getting a master's in the discipline. Uh, and so they, they have their master's degree, which back uh, when we were following strictly the KBOR requirements, we were in alignment with KBOR. Uh, the Kansas Board of Regents wasn't fully in alignment with the Higher Learning Commission, and the Higher Learning Commission wasn't terribly explicit, frankly. Uh, when HLC defined their standards more clearly, uh, the Kansas Board of Regents, uh, we had to, to align, obviously, with our credentialing we, agency. We've done our best to comply. Especially. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I think uh, uh, in mo I would say all of the faculty have some of their credentials. They may not have 18 hours, and that's the part I'm not sure how far away they are would be the, the issue. Uh, but it's, it's a significant number, uh, and it's, um, it doesn't help anyone in particular, but it is uh, a, a condition that, that colleges across the state and, and across the central state regions are wrestling with. Uh, I will say um, it does not appear that HLC has any inclination to change their requirement. They're, they're pretty clear on all of this. Uh, they're holding uh, their, their concession to the, to the challenge that they have posed for us really is the five-year extension. Um, I, I think it looks like nearly all the faculty are agreeing to move forward uh, in, in, in attaining those credentials. So I, I think we will be in good shape, but it is, it's a challenge, and, and we're, we're working with it. Is the five-year extension both for the concurrent, the College Now faculty? No, that's only for the concurrent College Now faculty. Not for our own faculty. Our own faculty will have to have their plans uh, in place and, and be attaining their credentials uh, by, was it fall 17? They'll have a year. And, and we've, uh, uh, we're meeting with all those faculty there that if, if they need to do their work, they're, they're working on those things. and, and uh, uh, have have developed their plans uh, to, to meet those credentialing requirements. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Ingram. I apologize. You told me ahead of time you wanted to include that in your learning quality no, report. That was my mistake, Mr. Chair. I didn't. And, I, and one more point on, on the AccuPlacer. Um, uh, again, uh, the placement in, in uh, college courses uh, has tr been, we, nearly all the, in fact, again, pretty much nationwide, the COMPASS exam was the, the, the standard uh, placement tool. Uh, the COMPASS uh, test has gone away. They're no longer supporting it, so it's not an option after this year. Uh, the state has adopted the AccuPlacer, which is another major, in fact, it's really the only major player in the market now. Um, we were able to negotiate through the state uh, special rates that'll get us a, a more affordable placement device. Um, and the Compass the AccuPlace will be in place for the spring of 2017. That's when the Compass will finally end and the AccuPlace will come into effect. 
the state has adopted common placement scores uh, that were substantially lower, actually, than what the ACUPLACE or even recommended. Uh, so our placement uh, scores, our faculty have reviewed those uh, cut scores, uh, and we're using scores that are really more in alignment with what the ACUPLACE itself actually rep recommends. Uh, we'll be monitoring uh, how those placement scores uh, work uh, to make sure that they're actually placing students accurately in, into primarily Comp 1 and College Algebra, are probably the two major courses that are affected by that. Um, the math faculty are actually developing uh, some uh, a local test to use in, in, in hand with the AccuPlacer uh, to better place students into cal uh, calculus. Uh, because the AccuPlacer tests, I didn't feel, had the adequate qu questions uh, for that. Uh, they'll have that developed by the end of the summer. Uh, in both uh, the reading, writing, and the math <coughs> courses, uh, they are, we are developing um, additional uh, alternative assessments so that if a student tests within a range, instead of just automatically being placed into the uh, developmental course, uh, they'll have some alternatives if they're within a certain range to go visit uh, possibly uh, you know, with the, the chair in English or the writing center to review and, and assess if, if there isn't, in fact, a chance that they can go ahead and move into Comp 1. Uh, so, so one of the recommendations that's come from the state and from AccuPlacer is to adopt multiple measures, and that's, which is what the state is really pushing for and is actually the common, it's really a best practice now nationwide uh, to look at multiple measures so that you use things like the G, uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the grade, the, the GPA. GPA, there you go, uh, only the biggest, most common uh, thing in, in, in higher ed. Uh, to, but we can use uh, the uh, GPA, uh, their, their activities and their participation and their record in high school, uh, along with, with special local measurements uh, so that we can try and do a better job, make sure that we're placing students and not making them take courses that they may not need. Um, the, I'm, I'm also pleased both the English and, and the math faculty are looking at um, ways of assessing uh, using uh, the, um, uh, my, my mind is going totally blank here, um, using alternative measures uh, so that we can look at how students, uh, or co I'm sorry, what I'm trying to say is co-requisite remediation, uh, which is another uh, increasingly uh, common usage for placement, uh, so that we can look at better ways of putting a student in a course that they might be in the developmental course along with support, or actually the, the gateway course with added support so that they can move through the gateway courses more quickly. Uh, so we have faculty that are looking at those practices at other colleges, and, and we'll see uh, there's, there's multiple dozens of ways of doing that, and, and we're exploring that as well. Uh, but, but in a nutshell, though I never say anything in a nutshell, um, <laughs> the, um, uh, the AccuPlacer will be in effect in the spring of 2017. Um, the, the, the only other comment that I would make, I mean, you, you gave a really thorough report on the college now, but just our own faculty as well, mm -hmm. as far as the credentialing from the higher learning. They're in, in better shape than our college now faculty. There okay. are a few that, that okay. need to pick up some additional hours, but, right. but we're in good shape on campus. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good. Questions about either the higher learning uh, council's credentialing or our placement tests? Thank you. Thank you. I know you can say GPA in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I could. <laughs> but I won't. All right, we'll move on to the management committee. Uh, Dr. Cook. Before, I, I, have to, I have to ask a question. What does it mean when Andy Anderson says, in short or in a nutshell? <laughs> Whenever I'm with my teenage, my, my teenage grandchildren and we have a question, they always go to Siri and ask the question. Even upgraded Siri. You started it in short and then you ended it in a nutshell. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate your passion and we're going to miss it sincerely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Management Committee met at 8 a.m. on Wednesday, June 1st. Uh, trustees uh, Cross and Lindstrom were in attendance with staff. We have a number of recommendations to present. 
The first is the official newspaper, Mr. Chris Gray, Executive Director of Marketing Communications, that Kansas statute, as you will remember, requires that a college publish legal notice in a newspaper, and that newspaper needs to publish at least 50 weekly issues, 50 times a year. And uh, uh, so we have a recommendation tonight to select our, our official newspaper. It is the recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accepts the recommendation of the college administration to designate the legal record, the Shawnee Dispatch, and Tri-County News as official newspapers of the college, and that publication constitutes legal notice on behalf of the Board of Trustees, and I'll make that motion. Second. Been moved and seconded to adopt the administration's recommendation for our legal newspapers. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Mr. Gray also reported that each year the college sponsors selected events that help the college maintain strong community relations and take advantage of advertising opportunities, marketing opportunities, if you will. Uh, the organizations that have been selected after extensive uh, discussion by Mr. Gray and staff are listed on page 12 of the board packet. Uh, I will say that this college, as many of you know, gets several requests a year uh, to sponsor or be engaged with their activity, and so this is a really difficult process the staff goes through. But it is the recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the above listed sponsorships for the 16-17 fiscal year at a cost of $14,000 plus an additional $3,000 contingency for a total cost of $17,000, and I'll make that motion. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the sponsorships for community events. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor say yes. 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 Those no. Motion carries unanimously. The next two, and Mr. Chair, if it's okay to take them together, these are, these are while I don't say any uh, RFP is routine, these are relationships we've had with past partners over a period of time. Uh, the first is with Gilmore and Bell as bound counsel for 2016-17. Uh, the second is with retention of Piper Jaffrey as financial advisor. If you want to take them separately and prepared. We take them together. We can, we can take them together. That'll and change. I would uh, make that motion that we approve those two recommendations. Second. It's been moved and seconded. I'm asking my standard question. Is there a periodic review within our policies of these two particular vendor relationships? They're reviewed annually um, by virtue of the fact that it's often presented to the management committee. But there's no formalized review as well as, as far as a process. Um, the, these two firms, uh, the college has worked with these firms for, for many years um, with a great deal of success. Uh, it's not exactly like these are lucrative accounts for them, uh, but nevertheless, they give us an incredible service and have performed well for the college. Okay. What, what did you say, Mr. President? It's not exactly like these are not lucrative. It's not like a, right. yeah. All right, any other questions or discussion? Not all in favor of the Reappointments for bond counsel and for uh, financial advisor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries unanimously. Next three recommendations have to do with year-end transfer of funds. In November 2006, the JCCC Foundation established a donor endowment fund to create an endowed professor in health care education. Per the letter of, of agreement, the college will provide a monetary contribution for the balance of the salary and benefit costs resulting from the position in excess of the annual endowment income, which is distributed from the foundation of the college to the college. In addition, college financial services staff identified two grants, which ended with college funds expended in excess of funds received from the grantor. Transfers are proposed for final cleanup and to eliminate deficit balances in the grant fund. Uh, before I uh, make our recommendations and, and ask for a second, I would say that on these grants, we did have extensive discussion in our management meeting about uh, how we how we plan for a grant, if it's a three-year grant or a five-year grant. And in these cases, in many cases, there are lingering costs once the grant ends with students that were in the program from the beginning of the grant. And so uh, I'm, I, I think the management committee was real, real pleased with the process step staff is taking to make sure that when we look at a grant initially, we'll anticipate those and, and, um, and then deal with them in an efficient manner at the close of, those, of that grant period. Having said that, it is the recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to authorize the following transfers from the general fund to each of the funds listed below as permitted under Kansas Statute 71-614. 
transfer of $39,150 subject to June 30, 2016 fiscal year-end payroll adjustments to the endowed professorship, professor, professorship restricted fund, transfer of $27,303.18 to the Kansas Workforce Residential Energy Grant Fund, and transfer of $36,861.73 to the Kansas Workforce Solar Electric Grant Fund. These transfer of funds will be recorded as of June 30th, 2016 and the 2015-2016 fiscal year, and I'll make that motion. Second. Been moved and seconded to make the three transfers described. Any discussion or questions? Not all in favor say yes. Yes. Oppose no. Motion carries unanimously. Next five recommendations are for bids or requests for proposals. Uh, again, each of these have gone under a very uh, specific bid and RFP process review. The first is for the renewal of annual contract for housekeeping services. It is the recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the extension of the annual contract for housekeeping services with ABM Janitorial Services, North Central Inc. at an expenditure not to exceed $253,347.72, and I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion about the renewal of the ABM janitorial services contract? If not, all in favor say yes. 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 Those no. Motion carries unanimously. Next is the renewal of annual contracts for furniture. These contracts were first bid out in 2012. Uh, it is the recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the renewal of the annual contracts for furniture with Encompass, the John A. Marshall Company, Scott Rice Office Works, and Spaces, Inc. at a total annual, annual expenditure not to exceed $700,000, and I'll make that motion. Second. Any questions or discussions regarding the renewal of the furniture contract? Not all in favor say yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion carries unanimous. Next renewal was for an annual contract for fine paper. Paper purchased under this contract will be used primarily by document services for the printing of instructional support materials, college brochures, and continuing education publications. It is the recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the College Administration's recommendation to approve the renewal of the annual contracts for fine paper in amounts not to exceed $125,000 from Midland Paper Packaging and Supplies, and 25,000 from Veritiv for a total expenditure not to exceed $150,000, and I'll make that motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor say yes. 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 Those no. Next is the annual RFP for the annual Motion contract carries. for beverages. It is a recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the establishment of an annual contract for beverages with Pepsi Beverages Company at an annual expenditure not to exceed $210,000, and I'll make that motion. Second. Um, in recognition of former Trustee Stewart, I'll state his objection since he <laughs> likes Coke. But is there any other discussion? Coca-Cola. Any other discussion? <coughs> not all in favor say yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Opposed, no. Motion carries unanimously. The final bid recommendation was for roof replacement and for the police academy and the student center. It is the recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the low bid of $489,000 from the Quality Roofing Company, plus an additional $48,900 to allow for contingencies for possible unforeseen costs for total expenditure not to exceed $537,900 for roof replacements, and I'll make that motion. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the low bid for roofing replacements. Is there any Discussion? Not all in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries unanimously. I might mention, Trustee Cook, those, those renewals are where we did an RFP for multiple years, and these are renewals of the winning bidder from the initial year. Some were the last year of a four year contract, <laughs> some were the second year, but they were all vetted and competitively bid at the initial contract. Correct. Maybe not so much with the roof companies, but roof the, the roof projects were part of uh, the long-term construction phase anyway. We've had ongoing work with them, but it's a little different than like with Pepsi and some of the others, the paper and so on and so forth. But they are partners that we have a high deal of confidence in. And other committee uh, work information was re presented uh, related to student debt and college finance by Dr. Randy Weber. In fact, we had a very extensive report on, on costs 
Uh, and uh, if, if, if you have interest, I'm sure Dr. Weber would like to have a one-on-one -on -one with you with that detail. But uh, Randy, that was uh, really a, a nice report and uh, uh, greatly appreciated. Um, we administered close to $30 million in grants and aid to students. Uh, JCCC financial aid staff improved processes to minimize student debt and to improve the college's default rates. So we had a, a big discussion about that. Uh, Ms. Lears said that the 2016-17 management budget that was approved by the Board of Trustees at their meeting on May 12, 2016 was subsequently loaded into the college's accounting system in order to facilitate procurement of goods and services for the coming year. Mitch Borchers gave the sole, sor sole source report and awarded of bids between twenty-five and one hundred thousand dollars. That summary is found, found on page eighteen of your of your packet. And Rex Hayes presented the capital infrastructure inventory and investment plan and reviewed our work schedule. Uh, that uh, particularly those items that are scheduled this summer and as we anticipate completion of those projects by fall. And uh, gave a uh, that monthly update is reported on page thirty-four of your packet. That concludes my report and. Uh, if you have questions, I'd be happy to defer those to Trustee Cross. <laughs> questions for either of our management committee members, Trustee Cross or Trustee Cook. Uh, in July, we will vote on the legal budget for publication that will be published in August. And then in, at our August meeting, we will hold our annual public hearing on the budget for 2016, 2017 and adopt uh, the legal budget at our August meeting. So if there's anybody that's interested in learning more about the budget and showing up at the public hearing. Um, they, they will be lonely because we don't get much attention for that, but we, it's very important. So if you want to show up and have some public input in August, that is your opportunity. Uh, next report is from the nominating committee, and that again goes back to Trustee Cook. Thank you. We presented to you, um, <clears throat> get out of one page to the other, the list of nominees uh, at our last meeting for you to consider. Uh, there, are, there are a couple of things. One, I'd like to make sure that, uh, and it's my error, that we listed Stephanie Sharp as Chair of Collegial Steering and Chair of Audit. That traditionally has been the Chairman of the Board, so in this case, Mr. Musil would Chair Collegial Steering and Mr. Musil will Chair the Audit Committee, but Vice Chair, in this case, Ms. Sharp will sit on that committee, serve on that committee. Uh, the other thing that we talked about, uh, so, so we present that to you for your, for your uh, consideration. But a part of that, Mr. Chair, is that our terms have traditionally gone from July 1 to June 30. And with the change in the election uh, for the next election cycle to November, we had asked you to consider uh, as a board that should we make these uh, positions through the first, um, what, Monday in January? Second Monday. Second Monday in January. So I, I think that we have two things. One, to approve that list of nominees and then to discuss the length of term. And I guess I would just ask us maybe to discuss that before I make the recommendation. The effort would be to alter the terms so that they now match the calendar year terms of our election Correct. years. Any questions or discussion about, you want to make a motion on either the slate and or the extension so we can discuss now, it? Let me do that. I'm trying to buy time till I found it because I went from Adobe to another, but I have that. Okay. <laughs> this is the recommendation of the nominating committee that the Board of Trustees approve the 2016 slate of officers uh, as changed with the chairs of collegial and audit committee, uh, committees and liaison assignments subject to extension through the second Monday in January of 2018 should the board subsequently determine that these assignments will run concurrent with the new fall election cycle calendar. And I'll make that motion. Second been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion about this? It will basically extend the terms of anybody, of those of us two years into our cycle, another six months. And with it goes all the pay and benefits <laughs> that we receive. It, just a Trustee point Cross. discussion, and it's not really any dissent. Uh, someone had raised the issue to me that it, it may make some sense to keep the structure we have because of uh, is it the financial year? It's in line with the financial year. So just raising it as a point of discussion, I'm not dissenting from this. I'm fine with whatever we decide here. I'm just raising the issue. I think it's a legitimate issue that our fiscal year set by the legislature is July 1 to June 30th. Our, election, our officer years or our board of trustee years are now second Monday in January for four years with four up every two years and three up the next two years. So it, there's no, I don't think there's a perfect solution here. And, and I frankly think it makes more sense to fit 
fit it in so that somebody, when they're coming into their term on the second Monday of January, then you decide who the officers are going to be for that year, um, rather than having maybe them, they could be replacing four people in the middle of that well, year. Well, Trustee Cross makes a good point, because then, you know, one could say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm coming in as a board member in the middle of a budget year. Uh, and this, uh, the, the, the election cycle would, would just affect us like every two years, but theoretically, if you named somebody to, the, to a committee in July, if we keep it the same as it is, take me for example, and I lose the election in November if I decide to run again, then you have to change the board again uh, with the new people coming on in January. So it, it's a good point. It's just a matter of where do we want to be more yeah, efficient I'm, I'm, or less efficient, I guess. I'm fine with that as it is. I, just, I think having it mesh with the terms of our elected officials is the best way to do it. So I'm going to support the motion. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose no. Oh, no. I vote aye or yes, which I forgot. I said aye. I know. I ask you to say aye. Motion carries unanimously. I missed, I forgot I my yes that. and no versus yes, aye and nay. Thank you. Okay, nominating committee uh, has been resolved. Uh, the next thing is a treasurer's report. Uh, Trustee Lindstrom is not here today. He had the opportunity and was invited to participate in a seminar this week at a very world-renowned prestigious university. It was either Kansas State or Harvard. I'm trying to remember which one. I think it was Harvard. So Trustee Lindstrom is at Harvard for the week, uh, which is a great opportunity for him and, and, and I'm sure will rebound to the benefit of this board. So I'll give the treasurer's report based on the summary staff has provided and then Rachel Lears is here uh, for any questions. The board packet contains a treasurer's report for the month ended April 30th. It's on pages 38 through 49 of your packet. Uh, items of note, uh, page one of the treasurer's report is the general and post-secondary technical education fund summary. As of April 30th, 83% of the college's fiscal year had expired. The college's unencumbered cash balances as of April 30th in all funds was 82.1 million, which is approximately 10.8 million higher than at the same time last year and the expenditures in all the primary operating funds are within the approved budgetary limits uh, for the fiscal year ending Ju June 30th, 2016. It is a recommendation of the college administration that the Board of Trustees approve the treasurer's report for the month ended April 30th, 2016, subject to audit, and I would so move. Second. Second. Are there any questions for Rachel? <laughs> Not all in favor say yes. 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 Those no. Motion carried and the treasurer's report will be accepted. Advisory committees, Dr. Sopcic. Uh, thank you, Trustee Musil. On page 49 of your board packet, there is a recommendation regarding our advisory committees. Every year, you're given a rather thick stack of, those, of, of the membership on those advisory committees. And advisory committees are critical to the mission of our college. It, um, bring, it engages members of the community, uh, the academic community, the business community, to talk about our programs and to make sure that they are as relevant as can be. And so it's the board's responsibility to review that list and approve it, and I'll read the recommendation. Um, it is a recommendation of the college administration that the board of trustees approve the advisory committees contained in supplement B from July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. So moved and seconded to adopt the advisory committee uh, report. All in favor, or is there any discussion? Just one point, Mr. Chair, uh, <clears throat> and I'll talk maybe a little bit more about it uh, at my KACCT report. But that supplement includes 105 pages. I hope you've looked at it and look at the broad scope of the advisory committees we have and, and who they represent. Uh, I, I just really applaud the college and the staff uh, in their respective departments with these courses to, to recruit and uh, sustain the kind of uh, community and uh, leadership we have in all of these programs. Agreed. Agreed. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Next item is the monthly report to the board by our president, Dr. Sopcic. Thank you, Trustee Musil. Um, you've all received the monthly report to the president, and this um, has about, gosh, I think 30 pages of outstanding information and accomplishments, things that have happened here on our campus uh, and executed by uh, members of the faculty and staff. So I hope you get a chance to read it there. It's, it's absolutely enlightening and, and really reflects so well on, on the college, on, on our college. 
Um, there are a couple issues in the President's report tonight, and this will be a quick one, um, which is maybe unusual. But the first topic is going to be the, um, and this is something that everyone wants to talk, to, talk about, is the allocation uh, with regarding the state. And in the state of Kansas, the term allocation uh, actually means they, they, it goes back. You usually think you're being allocated something. Uh, but this is, so this must be the second definition under allocation. Um, but this year, uh, we received an allocation of $860,000. That $860,000 is money that we will not receive from the state uh, for our academic year beginning in July 1. Um, we're very fortunate here because we do an excellent job of budgeting and we approach that rather conservatively. And so we will figure out ways to, to get by without that $860,000. But one must think of what could have been done with those funds to help promote student success as well as programs here on our campus. If you combine that with the allocation from last year, it totals about a million dollars. So that's what this college has, um, has not received um, over the past two years. We're very fortunate because we all enjoy here a very broad base of local support. But not all community colleges across the state are like that. These types of allocations will affect them in a variety of ways, which we heard about in Hutch. It could be the loss of a program or a position or what have you, but ultimately is something that everyone is kind of feeling, uh, feeling the crunch on. So I wanted to share that with you today uh, with regard to how that allocation is affecting our college. When you read in the paper about allotments by the governor, it has a real effect on whether it's mental health or uh, Medicaid or higher education regent schools or the community colleges now, and that was a significant chunk, $860,000. Uh, we did, we had budgeted for it, we were careful, as I think we always try to be, but it is, it is an amount we do not have to spend on our mission. And it should be known, that's 4%. That's 4% of the total amount of funds that, that come to us, and actually less than 1% of our total operating budget. Now, on the other hand, here's some exciting news. Uh, many of you may remember Jim McKay from the wide world of sports, right? Um, certainly one of my favorite shows every Saturday afternoon. Well, JCCC competes around the globe as well. Our teams travel throughout the United States, Europe, and Asia. And in Kansas City, the recent corporate challenge competition, we've had at least 100 employees um, compete and do incredibly well while representing our college. But this past week, Members of our JCCC community participated in the Kansas City International Dragon Boat Festival under the team moniker of JCCC China Hands. This event is a combination, it's kind of like America's Cup and, <laughs> and maybe rowing on the Charles River between Harvard and Yale. Um, these rowing teams compete in Kansas City's Brush Creek. So this year, our JCCC China Hands came in first place in the community division. I know we have a member of the team here with us, I, uh, Melanie Harvey. You can feel free to take a bow. She's got her medal on. We're glad you didn't fall in the Brush Creek. Um, but I'd like to read some of the other members on the team. Uh, Jeff Anderson, Jared Anderson, Deb Williams, Lynn Beatty, Mark Cowardin, who was with us earlier, uh, Sarah Subtle, Stephen Rayner, Chi Long Sia, Sheila Phillip, Pat Young, and Sam Davis. You know, we'd like to thank you for representing our college, and we look forward to a return visit next year after you do a repeat. So best of luck. I'd be happy to appoint a trustee volunteer for your team next year. <laughs> not too excited about that, are you? <laughs> you know, watching the Royals this week, it was um, an incredible game. It was in the middle of the eighth inning, and you're watching TV, and all of a sudden, one of our commercials comes on. And it was a great, a great placement, because the game was really close, uh, and you had high viewership there toward the end of that game. And um, I want to ask Chris Gray to come to the podium and kind of share with the board some of our recent um, uh, television execution. So Chris? And we're going to get this set up because we're actually going to show them on the screen. Okay. Great. Thank you, President Sopcich, trustees. Um, 
This is actually a project that was initiated prior to my arrival in college, and actually Christy McWard and Vince uh, Miller are here in the audience. Um, so I had the pleasure of really kind of taking this initiative of, of really trying to rebrand the college from a positioning standpoint uh, on TV. And that's a tough thing to do in today's environment uh, with the digital landscape. And if you can think about attention spans, and usually TV commercials are an afterthought when you leave or you disengage or you buzz through. So, so it's a difficult challenge to really position a college in today's TV environment. We took the stance of looking at uh, all the different stations, so it's, it's networks as well as cable providers. Um, so it's Google Fiber, it's AT&T, it's Via Media. So we're really across all these stations, and we're also addressing uh, a lot of the uh, the cable and the cord cutters that are out there today too. And more and more people are disengaging with cable, and we're using a tactic to really serve some of these spots up from a digital standpoint to still kind of capture this audience, knowing that more and more of our students, as well as other adults, are going in that fashion. Um, these are shown in specific areas. Um, I'd love to say I, I pushed a button in the eighth inning when the game was closed when President Sopcic was watching it and displayed that spot. Um, that wasn't the case, but there is specific channels, networks that are really geared towards the target demographics that the college is trying to engage with. We created two videos. Uh, one is going to be more of an overall branding position of what JCC is and the opportunities that it provides students as well as the community. The second is more of a career and technical aspect of it. Um, that really showcases the opportunities and the careers uh, that one can capture here at the college through attending. And again, these are, it's more of a fast-paced, uh, lively, and, and a punchier spot. Um, they're about 25 seconds in length, and, and I hope you enjoy. So with that. You want more than just a job. You want a career, something you're passionate about, a journey you'll love. And that journey starts at Johnson County Community College. Johnson County Community College. The journey starts here. So obviously that was more the, the career and the technical aspect. And this next one is you know, what we're calling the Flipboard Campaign. It really is more of a branding. And if you've been out to, to Children's Mercy Park, you've, you've, you've seen some of these assets. And we're actually starting to carry this through in some of our promotions and the sponsorships we have with, with Sporting Kansas City, as well as some of the other digital ads that we display. Johnson County Community College. The journey starts here. So you might ask, you know, where's the sound and where's the voiceover on that one? And it was actually done on purpose because um, it's almost jarring not to hear something. So it's a tactic that's being used more and more to, to almost kind of draw attention when people don't hear a sound. It's an attention grabber in that standpoint. So I'll leave it at that. You know, I will <coughs> say that I think it was a great example of collaboration. So not only our video services uh, department here at the college as well as the marketing department, uh, that was a collaborative effort also with an outside agency. So we had three distinct groups really coming together uh, over a process that I think uh, evolved in a great project. So with that, any questions? Questions? Like it. Like, yeah, very imp impressive. Thank you. Thank you, President Sarah. Thank you. Thanks. You know, it's a, it's a whole different world today when years ago, if you were going to put an ad on, on the TV, you had maybe three stations to choose from, maybe four. So today you can imagine the complexity, but what makes it even more fascinating is that so many people don't even watch TV like that anymore. In fact, this is their primary connection to the world. And so how to go more digital and to utilize this device with regards to marketing and selling, and, and I listen to Pandora, and I've heard more of KU's new business building on Pandora than just about anywhere, um, is really where things are going. So to be able to get on top of that is so essential in today's world. And it's a real challenge, too. You know, on another topic, um, we've had, obviously, we've had considerable transition in our college over the past several years. And tonight is a time to say yet one more goodbye. Um, I'd like to recognize Julie Haas. And Julie, I know um, I didn't really suggest you come to the podium, but I would like to do for you to come to the podium uh, at this point. <laughs> Let the record reflect she screwed up her face and said, I don't want to come to the podium. <laughs> Let the record reflect. 
Thanks, Julie. Um, you know, we um, would like to recognize Julie Haas tonight. Uh, you know, she'll be leaving us at, at the end of this month, and her commitment to our college has spans, spanned over 28 years. I mean, that's incredible, almost three decades. Her contribution to the college is long-lasting, as over these years, you have to imagine that every single word that's come out of this college and it's going to the community, and so many words internally, every one of those words has gone through Julie Haas. And I can promise you, there was never a typo, <laughs> a grammatical mistake, or a misspelled word. And Julie, um, I wanna thank you for that incredible pursuit of excellence. You know, we tried to calculate the number of trustee meetings that Julie has attended. <laughs> and we came up with maybe around 260 regular meetings. Now, that does not include every one of the subcommittee meetings that Julie also attended, because Julie kind of monitored the pulse of the college and was kind of like a walking uh, information source. If you put all that together, Julie has probably attended over 500 plus meetings connected to the trustees alone. And you have to, to, to comprehend that because of that, because of those attending those meetings, everything has worked so well with regard to the communication to our trustees as well as the community. So Julie, on behalf of the college, thank you for your service and your commitment to higher education. Thank you. Would anybody else like to comment from the board? Well spoken by our president. On anything? Or on, just on, <laughs> <laughs> let's limit it to Julie at this point. No. Uh, I will just say on behalf of the board, to, to try to thank, Chris touched on a little bit, that how communications and marketing and wordsmithing and delivery of messages has changed over those 28 years Julie has been. You've seen an awful lot of change. Uh, this college has grown up a lot. We'll celebrate our 50th year in two years, but so you've been here for well over half of the college's existence, and we've changed a lot during that period of time. I thank you for putting up with uh, the current set of trustees and all the former trustees <laughs> who may have challenged your uh, patience at, at various times, but thank you very much for your service to this college and this community. All right, and now I'd like to turn this over to Dr. Korb. Okay, well, it is my pleasure to um, welcome and introduce you to Dr. Mickey McLeod. He will um, be our Vice President of um, Academics in a very short period of time. And so Dr. McLeod comes to us from Blue River Community College where he is currently the Dean of Instruction. And so if you would like to come to the podium and um, say just a, a few words, we'd be happy to um, Excellent. Well, thank you for having me. I would like to thank the trustees for offering me this opportunity um, to work with this fine institution. Uh, and I would like to thank all of the faculty and staff who took the time to interview me, uh, grilled me with a number of questions to which, some of which I had absolutely no answer to, and yet they still put up with continuing on with the conversation. But I also want to say um, I think this is a job that I will enjoy doing but I will enjoy doing it for a different reason. In the last several posts that I have filled, I have come into situations where I've had to fix the leftover burning fires from my predecessors, and I think that I'm coming in to replace somebody who is stellar. Um, I spent a very short time with Andy Anderson, and I had no, I didn't tell you yesterday I was gonna do this, but after I walk, walked around in your wake yesterday at the K board meetings, um, Sun Tzu once said a good leader is benevolent, and unconcerned with fame. Um, I think that Andy exemplifies that, and so this will probably be the largest challenge of my career because I'm not coming into a position where the previous person left me lots of fires. Those are easy to fix. I'm coming into a position where the previous person did a stellar job and everybody loves them. That's always harder to come into because you have to live up to um, somebody who is universally loved. 
Uh, I think I watched him get kudos from about 30 different people yesterday in Topeka. Um, and every other community college CAO talked about how important it was that he actually took the time to form uh, relationships with them. Uh, these people might not like me at all. <laughs> and yet I'm held to a standard that I have to try and make friends with them all because he has formed such great relationships. Um, I look forward to uh, looking at this institution um, as we move forward through the years about what we can be. Um, Sun Tzu also said that invincibility lies in the defense, the opportunity of victory in the attack. Uh, I think we need to step forward into the next era with the same vigor that this last era was carried forward. We need to continue to attack ignorance and tolerance, all the things that college is supposed to stand against in forming a better community, better human beings, uh, in creating the human capital that the country is built on, in particular, that Johnson County will be built on. I think Andy's left us in a great position to do that, and I hope to not mess it up too much and keep it moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome. We're looking forward to your tenure. Thank and when you. you leave, we want to hear the same thing from your successors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will give that my best. <laughs> we are excited. <laughs> thank you, Mickey. <laughs> um, thank you, Dr. McLeod, and thanks, Judy. I'd like to recognize Dennis Arjo and Julie Haas, who co-chaired the selection committee that ultimately uh, ended up with, uh, with Dr. McLeod as the uh, new chief academic officer. So thank you for your hard work. I know it's never an easy task, but it's very much appreciated. Now, um, Dr. McLeod here has referenced Andy, and, um, and I'd like to kind of follow up on that a little bit. Um, Mickey has big shoes to fill, and I know that's kind of a cliche statement, but it's so true. And during his time here, over the past three years as in this position, um, Andy's made some difficult calls, I mean, tough calls that, that he made, and that's, that's never easy. You know, he has worked tirelessly, and I mean tirelessly, and I'd like to recognize his wife, Kathy, in the audience, because when one is um, put in that kind of situation, oftentimes the home front is the one that also pays a price. And I know um, Andy will have a lot of time to make up, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but when it comes to Andy, he always promotes the best interests of the students, and, in this, and, and during his time in this role, he has also promoted or advanced our mission, um, our academic mission. Um, as Mickey alluded to earlier, Andy has cultivated relationships throughout the state and throughout the region in the community college world. Wherever you go, people will speak of Andy and they'll speak of him in glowing terms. I have to say, Andy, that people are genuinely saddened by your departure certainly up there, as Mickey alluded to at the KBR yesterday, uh, but just about everywhere in our community. Uh, so on behalf of the college, we'd like to thank you for your service to the college, which I believe is 35 years, um, but also your commitment to the teaching profession. And he's a lifelong teacher. He loves to lecture. You sampled some of that earlier tonight. <laughs> um, he has been doing that for, for 43 years. And so, Andy, in your absence, I want to know who do we turn to to collect the wisdom of Homer. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Andy Anderson. Your service to the college has been exemplary. Thank you. Thank you. Andy, would you like to say anything? Actually, I wrote it out. <laughs> we, we have 50 minutes just by chance. Um, I thought I might have the opportunity for another lightning round. Uh, in all seriousness, I want to thank the faculty. Uh, I want to thank the, the president's cabinet, who's Listen to me challenge some things along the way. Uh, uh, the Board of Trustees, uh, the commitment everyone brings to making the college a great place, um, a place that inspires learning to transform lives and strengthen communities. Serving in this role as the Vice President of Academic Affairs, I've come to appreciate the incredible complexity of a wonderful college. Uh, this place is far bigger 
uh, than, than any of us actually probably realize. It's something I came to realize in Topeka after about three months when I realized that decisions that we might make here about our own scheduling, our own all kinds of random things, turns out to affect not only ourselves but colleges across the state. Uh, we set models that affect colleges across the nation. Uh, when we try to think through decisions, the context is greater than we, we can almost ever realize. Um, I've come to appreciate that uh, after, after these three and a half years, I guess. Uh, I was aware of it, but, but living it is, is very different. Um, most of all, I, I want to thank and, and recognize the value and the critical importance of working together. Uh, following the daily news, one sees more and more how critical it is to strengthen communities, part of our mission. We are always better when we come together, supporting our common humanity. I believe that's the only way we can overcome our fears of failure and find our better selves. Sorry. At the end of his lectures, not mine, <laughs> uh, but at the end of his lectures, reviewing the accomplishments of Western civilization, excuse me, uh, Sir Kenneth Clark comes to a, a few final rather simple conclusions that summarize his personal beliefs, some beliefs that I think I share. Uh, Clark says, I am sure that human sympathy is more valuable than ideology. He says, I believe in courtesy, the ritual by which we avoid hurting other people's feelings by satisfying our own egos. I believe our college is at its best when we embrace these simple values, human sympathy and courtesy. And on the whole, I think we do a pretty good job of doing that. And finally, since I do have to refer to Homer, finally. Um, really, the whole story, I, since I can't quote it because the quote it is, is really um, over a couple thousand lines. Um, really, to, to the point of the whole story, the whole book is a tale of a homecoming. Odysseus returning to his patient Penelope. My wife and family have been patient of so much. I could not have served the college, taught my classes, or been a teacher without her support. I want to thank her most of all, more than I can ever express here. Uh, it is a very strange thing to think about 43 years of lectures. My students um, probably thought they were all that long. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I th thank you for the opportunity to serve the college. Uh, this has been an incredible experience. Um, knowing all of you has been very much um, uh, a family. Thank you. motion we adjourn. I mean, it doesn't seem like we should go forward after that, Andy. Uh, any other comments? Trustee Cross. Yes, sir. With respect to, I think, collegiality and reaching uh, across uh, lines or to build bridges, when talking to a colleague of ours, Trustee uh, David Lindstrom, last month, I believe, before the management committee, with some ideas I had, he had said that some of, let's say, my criticism of the legislature, um, while I think somewhat founded, uh, they should receive some credit for doing a percentage of what we're asking them to do and helping to build our institution. Uh, he assured me they watch us. I didn't think anybody, my wife doesn't watch us. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, great. If Topeka watches, then, uh, you know, I can't be any more bare with somebody than to say, you know, we do thank you for what you do. Uh, some of us do offer criticism as a part of a, uh, I guess, a loyal opposition or a loyal uh, dissent. But uh, I just wanted to comment, with respect to the 860 allocation, uh, what is given is appreciated, uh, though some of us may dissent from that allocation being taken back. So I hope that reaches its mark. I wanted to echo uh, Vice President Anderson's statements, someone who was always very uh, candid with me, helped me learn my position, uh, and not being just the guy firing off emails at some conference. So I appreciate uh, his and, and Ms. Haas's service and everyone's service here 
Trustee uh, Drummond, whose time is coming here, but uh, I just wanted to comment on that and say thank you for every, everyone. Well, I, I will offer comments about Andy, and usually I only cry during the budget. <laughs> it kind of got me messed up here, but you stepped into a position that was supposed to be interim, replacing somebody who'd been here for a long time. You didn't have to do that. I suspect you didn't want to do that. I suspect you didn't want to do it for three years, but you did it for the, for the institution. Um, and through all those challenges, you never lost sight of our vision. So I, I want to say thank you. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm just a wimp, but I'm going to miss you, Andy. Uh, the next item on the agenda. Uh, there's no old business. Is that, does that complete your report? That completes Are you about done running people out <laughs> and welcoming people in? And uh, we July, we're going to stop the July, we're going to stop having the June meeting because June 30th is the end of our fiscal year and people leave and it's, it's too tough. Okay, well, no old business that I'm aware of and no new business, so we'll move to reports from board liaisons. Um, Dr. Arjo, you get to follow this. Dennis, is that first report from the new faculty association president. You're a philosopher, so this will be a piece of cake. Well, we will see. Thank you uh, very much, uh, opportunity to speak. Um, I would like to revisit a matter I brought to the board's attention last meeting by way of a, a statement on behalf of the faculty association uh, regarding the college's participation with the Kansas Association of Community College Trustees. Um, so that uh, statement, let me just say first, was the result of a motion made at our last general meeting um, in May, the FA meeting in May, and it did pass unanimously. So I do think that speaks to the level of concern the faculty have for uh, this matter. Um, the background, as you know, really has to do with the um, matter of due process and House Bill 2531, I believe it was and uh, apparent cooperation or support of that bill on the, by the um, KACCT. So perhaps by way of uh, responding to a potential question, uh, why we're still so concerned with this in light of the master agreement amendment that took care of um, our media concerns of faculty um, for the most part locally. Uh, just let me say just a couple things. Um, so this has to do with what is usually referred to as tenure. There's a very long history in the academic world of tenure being tied very closely to the value of academic freedom. So we see this not so much as a policy that we might have to use any day now, but really a matter of what we value. I tend to think of it kind of like uh, insurance. Insurance is a kind of funny thing. You spend a lot of money on something you hope you never have to use. And you do that because what you're insuring has value to you. You want to make sure that it is there. So it's an expression of your valuing of this item that you're willing to pay money that you hope to never recoup, really. Um, so in some respect, having this policy at the state level in law is an expression of the state of Kansas's valuing, we see, higher education because it is an expression of the value it places on allowing faculty the space they need to do their jobs, being somewhat insulated from political, legal uh, pressure. So that is why we are very uncomfortable, to say the least, in supporting a, uh, an organization which seems um, <clears throat> maybe more complex than we appreciate, and we'd be happy to hear more about exactly what all the KACCT does. But from our perspective, there is just a fundamental disconnection here of our participating in an organization which seems to be acting against what we see as a fundamental value in higher education. So I just wanted to try to explain that side of it. Uh, with that, I'm happy to address questions or concerns that may have arisen in the past month. Have you had a chance to think about it and talk about it and look at what I gave you? Any questions on that topic? Uh, I might, I may mention that uh, I think I made it clear during the, our discussion on House Bill 2531 in our February meeting, uh, whatever, whichever one that overflowed into the Ben Craig Auditorium <laughs> upstairs. Uh, 2531 was not the most of my worries with respect to legislation that is supported by some members of KACCT, um, statewide mill levy, loss of service areas, those types of issues are, are I think, far more dangerous to Johnson County in the long run. And I, I'm very pleased that uh, your predecessor and you as part of the team and then 
Dr. Sopcich and Dr. Korb and the rest of the team. Um, I can't imagine a faculty in a better place right now with respect to academic freedom than the faculty here because it is in state law still and perhaps that's a reflection that the legislature realized that value. Um, and it's also in the master agreement. So, and frankly, I think a better format in the master agreement than is in state law. So, uh, but we understand, and I think we, I think if we've had those discussions about KACCT, and it, they, they will be ongoing. Um, I don't know that we have a formal decision about how to address that, but we've certainly all seen the the resolution or the letter that you wrote on behalf of the faculty association, and appreciate the the issues in there. They've been struggled with by this board for all five years that I've been on it. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways this goes beyond just, as I said, kind of our standing vis-a-vis -a, -vis a given policy. Um, I think it's, it's safe to say we're not looking at um, some kind of stereotypical witch hunt against any faculty. That's, that's not really the issue. Because I try to frame it, even I mean, laws do a lot of things. One thing they do is teach and they teach as an expression of what is valuable. They protect what is valuable. So even if tangibly nothing were to change were this to come back to the legislature next year, we would be insulated because of the master agreement. But were it to pass again uh, on the second try, it would still put us in a state in which, by our lights at least, higher education has become less valued. Uh, academics, we live in a world that goes beyond just our institution. When I go to conferences, when I talk to uh, philosophers and other philosophy programs, their colleagues, they're part of my world too. So this is bigger than, than us, I would reiterate. Mr. Chair. Trustee Cross. Yes, uh, did you, uh, Mr. President, thank you for being here today. Uh, I think you know that I opposed House Bill 2531 um, and supported a lot of your movements. I do think that our relationship uh, with KACCT, as I said at that general meeting last month, is a complicated one and frankly necessary one to say the least. I just returned from Portland, Oregon, where among other institutions, Umpqua Community College and Virginia Tech University, in coordination with the National Association of Community College Trustees, put together one of the best collaborative efforts I've ever been a part of, either in law, politics, or anything connected to here. Uh, and while I certainly was disappointed in KACCT's stand on that particular bill, uh, I do think that um, your voices were heard and uh, I think that this resolution is noted. Um, but I do think on balance, in very difficult times, KACCT is a useful organization to this entity. Um, and I do respect you bringing the resolution forward and, and, and noting it again here tonight. But I just want to give you my thoughts and recognition of the resolution uh, and express my general thoughts. Thank you. Trustee Cook. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I don't want to take from Dr. Arjo's time, but I will respond to his when I give my KACCT report. I do have some responses. Okay. That'd be good. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Enjoy the summer. Thank you, Dr. Well, we'll okay. see you in July. Yep. <laughs> Johnson County Education Research Triangle, Mr. Lindstrom. Uh, I don't believe they've had a meeting since our last meeting, so we'll skip that and ask for his report next month. Kansas Association of Community College Trustees, that would be Trustee Cook. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Dr. Arjo, I repeat, I, I appreciate your, your question and your representation of the faculty's position. Um, so I was just on an ACCT conference call this afternoon prior to this meeting, and Dr. Sopcic and I attended the Kansas Association of Community College Trustees in Hutchinson this past weekend. And let me just say that um, while I believe this group of trustees in this administration um, was and is committed to having a due process procedure that not only equals what the state may have by statute, but excels, I certainly understand uh, a faculty member's position that, well, what happens when this group of trustees changes, goes away, or changes in philosophy, and what happens when we have a different administration? So I appreciated your insurance policy analogy. I thought it was very appropriate. Uh, so I understand. Um, I, for one, would not uh, vote to leave KACCT based, though, on the due process bill. Let, let me explain that. 
There was an issue at ACCT today on a national level, and, and there are many of them nationwide, that, and they don't all align with JCCC. And so do I, do I quit and leave because we may have a differing viewpoint on that one issue? I think not. Uh, like the Trustee Cross indicated, and as Andy has said, uh, I'm beginning to realize more and more when I'm on this national board the perception that the nation has of this institution. And it's very strong. I, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised, as Andy has indicated, that when he first went to KBOR or Topeka, uh, the impression that people have of this institution, which you and your colleagues have established. So uh, we sometimes have to think beyond an issue that may not be to our liking, yet a very emotional and sensitive one. At KACCT, um, we had a, a similar situation to the due process bill when Wichita State University wanted to merge with Wichita Technical School. KACCT opposed that bill, and as you know, there are six technical colleges in Kansas and 19 community colleges. Interestingly, the 19 community colleges provide 75% of the technical education courses in this state. And yet we have this, this other board called the Tech Education, the Technical Education Authority, TEA, which Andy is very fond of and, 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 and a member and, and proud of. And yet TEA got pretty upset with the position that KACCT took because they perceived we blocked that merger. And perhaps we did. And it wasn't so much we were against the merger, but um, it, it, was, it was the how process and how it affected community colleges in that geographic area where Wichita State wanted to now perhaps recruit students that were were participants in Senate Bill 155, which affected high school recruiting, which affected community college survival. And, and we've got, I think, four or five community colleges in the southeast that are pretty close in proximity, and they're all competing for students. And so uh, we have some issues to deal now with TEA, KACCT, and KBOR in terms of how we work together. And I think, uh, like Trustee Musil, um, I, I, I frankly think we have bigger issues in terms of future funding and future existence with service areas and mill, statewide mill levies. On the other hand, you're asking for a plus. We just had our first graduating class of the Kansas Leadership Institute, uh, created and sponsored by KACCT. And I believe, Dr. Sopcich, we had 22 participants that completed. Our institution had two participants. And the idea is that as we have realized turnover in our leadership at community colleges in the last few years of our 19 community colleges, we decided we need to begin to have a program to try and provide an opportunity for young leaders in our college campuses to uh, uh, advance in their careers with the Leadership Institute. And we had two testimonials Friday night at our conference. Uh, and many of these participants already have their doctor's degrees, <laughs> but they got involved in the Leadership Institute, and I believe I'm pretty fair, Joe, in saying that they thought the experience was a several week experience, whereby they leave like on a Thursday night or a Friday morning and spend Friday and Saturday at a college. Uh, there are a number of sessions throughout the year, and they build this cohort of colleagues that will become very unified. And they were very strong in their testimony about the experiences they've had. Some speakers come in, and I was it, I forget if it was Stephanie or Melanie that spoke Friday night, and she said, for many of us that have our doctoral programs, this experience was much more stimulating than our doctoral program. And what was exciting, seven of the 22 now have advanced positions within their colleges. One college lost two to other colleges, and yet he was very happy about the program. So we're trying to grow leadership within our state for future leadership to stay in the state. Will they all stay? No. They have a job career. I think they ought to take advantage of the best experience they have. But I believe that's one of the strengths that KACCT has provided. Uh, and so um, I certainly appreciate your concern, and I understand your concern. Uh, I was a teacher once, and I had the same concerns you have uh, about 
how is my superintendent of schools or my school board going to treat me? If I teach a course particularly that may have some um, potential controversy about the subject matter, and so then we get into all this freedom of expression, and I, I for one understand that, but don't intend to get into a, in a nutshell or in short story tonight about that. Uh, but thank you, I hope that helps explain that there are issues that we sometimes uh, don't agree with, but we have to work through and hopefully we can be uh, inside the tent affecting those decisions rather than standing outside the tent and having something done to us. I'd remind all of us that the core values of uh, ACT, we have six. It's boardsmanship, advocacy, student success, diversity, innovation, and service. And we spent a whole day Friday with Dr. Keith Miller from Greenville Community College Technical Center in Greenville, South Carolina, who evidently has done some good work on innovation. And if you look at Dr. Sopcich's report with the staff, we, we can almost break down those sections. There's a, certainly a section there on student success. And, and uh, so at the end of every slide, he'd ask a question, how does your college stack up in each of these areas that he talked about? And like Trustee Cross again going to Oregon or Andy saying, I really feel good about how our college stacks mm -hmm. up. And, and uh, uh, doctor, I appreciate your commitment to say let's, let's go from this level to the next and we're in a new era. And how do we, how do we shift this aircraft carrier to, to, to move in a different course? Uh, because we have a, obviously a new world and, and issues to deal with. And, uh, we always can't predict when those issues are going to affect us. So I'm sorry to take so much time on all that, but I think it explains at least my position that I'm, I want to give KACCT a chance, yet we are reviewing very closely how does a, a national association and a state association affect the best interests of our college. And sometimes we have to, we have to participate for the best interests of the state organization and the best interests of the national organization. And that's why I challenge all of our trustees to please read the work that goes into that monthly report because if we want to become better advocates of this college, there's a wealth of information right in that report that can help us. That concludes my report. Questions for Trustee Cook? I, I worry if we put Trustee Cook and Andy Anderson together on the agenda. <laughs> That was, that was very well said, Jerry, and uh, that the point is that to be a member of ACCT, we have to be a member of the sponsoring state organization, so we would lose the, the ability to collaborate nationally as well as collaborate statewide, and we would be outside of two tenths, I think, is the issue. Well, and by the way, I, if, 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 if we decide to, to drop out of KACCT in the best interest of this college, I have no problem going off the national board because I want to do what's in the best interest of this college. All right, we're ready to move uh, to the foundation liaison report. Trustee Ingram. Yes, thank you. On May 24th, the Johnson County Community College Foundation held its annual luncheon. More than 100 guests enjoyed the event in which uh, there was a featured surprise award called the Open Petal. That was one of the main reasons that I wanted to provide a report today. As you know, the college has a history of having an open petal incorporated into college logo. That little touch put there when the logo was originally conceived years ago reminds us that there, as long as there are new ideas to present, new challenges to accept, and new visions to pursue, this institution will always be open to them. This award honors those who embody that concept, people who are always open to new ideas and who work constantly in pursuit of greater challenges and visions. Hugh Libby is a foundation member and donor who presented this award. He shared that he was educated by the award winner about the mission and excellence of the college and the crucial role it plays in our community. In turn, this motivated him to leave a substantial gift through his estate plan to support the college. Hugh shared that it was the winner of this award who brought the college to life for me. And I'll quote, I'm sorry. It was the winner of this award who brought the college to life for me. He is a tireless advocate of Johnson County Community College, not only in our county, but in fact, all over this continent. He then presented the surprise honor to his dear friend, Dr. Jerry Cook. I wanted to make sure all of the trustees were aware of this well-deserved recognition for Jerry's service to Johnson County Community College and the entire community college system. Other highlights of the meeting included celebration of the $1 million gift to rename the Culinary Academy from the Wiley Trust, and we congratulated Joni Becker on her retirement this month following 27 years of service to the foundation. Thank you. 
and congratulations. Trustee Dr. Cook, congratulations. But you do not get to leave on June 30th. <laughs> the rest of these folks. Um, I, I made a mistake at the beginning of the meeting. I did not mention the open forum session. At each meeting, we have an open forum session where citizens or anybody is allowed to participate and comment. Uh, they need to register before the meeting. There was nobody registered today, uh, but I want to make sure that everybody knowing that's watching this understands that there is an opportunity to address the board uh, for a limit of five minutes at the start of each meeting and next meeting I will make sure to call that at the right time. Uh, we're now ready for our consent agenda. The consent agenda is a grouping of items that have been reviewed and are of routine nature and they're typically considered in one motion and one vote. Uh, any member of the board may request that a particular item be removed from the consent agenda and considered, debated, and voted upon separately. Are there any items that any board member would like to consider separately in today's consent agenda? No. If not, do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda? So, so moved. moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we will have an executive session at the end of the meeting today, but before we get to that portion of the agenda, um, you want to talk about Dr. Bob first? I'll turn it over to Dr. So Dr. Sopcich. It seems like we're having a mass exodus this evening, but um, when it comes to our trustees, Bob, it, I, it's, it's, your last, it's, it's your last meeting this evening. And I don't know if everyone's familiar with your incredible track record of public service that has impacted Johnson County in so many ways. Um, MNU, Olathe, um, TLC, um, all of those organizations benefited from your leadership, as we have as well. And I, th I think that I'll always remember, remember you uh, and you're pounding on the word relevance, um, which is so important in today's higher ed world, the importance of organizations, of colleges uh, being relevant as to how they serve their students in the community. So on behalf of, of, of the faculty, the staff, and everyone who works here, Bob, thank you for your leadership and for your contributions during your time here on the board. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. Would you like to comment, Dr. Drummond? Well, thank you so very much. It's uh, been a very significant honor for me. This is, in many ways, the capstone of my career. I started my career in education when I was 22 years old, trying to teach some sweat hogs, government, and history none of which they had at least a bit interested. <laughs> and from that time on, as a student teacher and then a teacher, I've spent the last 45 years in education of some sort in some way. And I've just had the privilege and the honor to uh, be able to be in a lot of different venues and be involved in education from every level possible, and uh, possible to me, that is. And I'm just very thankful to have that privilege. And now that I'm a grandfather six times, it's time that I focus my education on grandchildren. And before I left tonight to come here, three of my granddaughters who live around the next cul-de-sac, just as I was leaving, ran over to our house and to tell you, you know, the level of life that I live now is they wanted to borrow half a dozen eggs. <laughs> so they could help their mom make a, a cobbler that I hope I have a bite of when I get it. <laughs> so that's where I'll be spending a lot of the rest of my life, trying to provide education for my grandchildren and other grandchildren, I think, that I come across. And when, you, when you're with one grandchild, you're with a whole neighborhood of grandchildren. And so this, this experience here has been the capstone of my education career. Not that I'm going to kind of crawl in a corner and, and not do anything, but uh, certainly be focusing more on the local level instead of the county-wide level and the district level and things like that. 
but to have the opportunity and the privilege to serve with uh, the trustees around this table and some of the trustees have graduated like I did and then to work with the faculty of the administration that I've had an opportunity to do the past seven years has been a real thrill, a real thrill for me. And to be able to uh, see Community College continue to raise its standards and to serve as many students as they can and to continue to try to find new ways to serve the underserved student and the students that could be here that aren't here. And that's always been my passion and uh, we have, as a community college have become very successful at that but until we have all of them here we're not successful so my challenge to myself and to you is let's keep being creative let's keep being innovative let's find ways for those first generation kids and adults to experience johnson county community college because as all of you know it's transformational uh, whether they're 33 years old or whether they're a 17-year-old in our, in our College Now program. It's transformational, and it's a, it's a great beginning for all of these students. And the work that you have done and you will continue to do will be of, of great consequence to our, to our county in the days ahead. So thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to work with you. Uh, I occasionally may, may turn you on and watch <laughs> Honestly, can't do that until my cable company has you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I can find you on the internet. So thank you. It's been my privilege and honor, and uh, we'll be thinking about you as I'm driving away. <laughs> the place is unknown. Well, I, I would just I, I said about a month ago how much I appreciated serving with you, Bob, and I would just say that I'm reminded of an interviewer that was interviewing Mother Teresa, and she he said, "You pray a lot, don't you?" And she said, "Yes, I do, several times a day." And he said, what do you do when you pray? And she says, well, I, uh, I mostly listen. And he said, well, what do you think God does when you pray? And she says, well, I think he mostly listens. So if you listen to those six grandchildren, they can teach you an awful lot. So that's what I yeah. say. Thank you. They already have every day. <laughs> I, I think if you ask a majority of Johnson Countyans what makes this county special, it's the educational system that's available. There are very many choices, whether it's K-12 or, or higher education. And Bob, your experience over since you were 22 years old uh, as a teacher, as an administrator at Mid-American Nazarene, on the Olathe School Board for 20 plus years, 18. 18 years, on the community college board here, I suspect we can say safely that nobody has done more for education in this county than you have. Thank you really seems anticlimactic to move into an executive session. Yes, let's do it. Um, but I know Bob wants one more before he leaves the board. <laughs> so, I would like to entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters of non-elected personnel in order to protect the privacy interests of the individuals to be discussed, consultation with an attorney which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship in order to protect the privilege and the board's communications with its attorney on legal matters, the session will last one hour and no more than one hour and 15 minutes, and no action will be taken during the session. I'd like to invite uh, President Joe Sopchik and G General Counsel Tanya Wilson to join this executive session. Uh, do I hear such a motion? So moved. Second. Trustee Cross moved and Trustee Ingram seconded. All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Uh, it passes unanimously. We will start the session at 645, which would mean we would be back here no later than 8 o'clock. Thank you all. We're back in open session at 8 o'clock after our hour and 15 minute executive session. Uh, we're going to need a little more time in executive session, so I would like to entertain a motion to go in executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters of non-elected personnel in order to protect the privacy interests of the individuals to be discussed, consultation with an attorney which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship in order to protect the privilege in the board's communications with its attorney on legal matters. This session will last no more than 30 minutes uh, and no action will be taken during the session. We'd like to invite Dr. Sopchik to join us in this executive session. We will return uh, no later than 8.33. If, is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Second. 
Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not all in favor say yes. 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 Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried unanimously. We'll be back in open session no later than 8.33. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We are back in open session at 8.33 uh, after our executive session of 30 minutes. No action was taken. Um, we're going to go back into an executive session for no more than an additional 30 minutes. Um, I think I'll start this one at 8.35, so if anybody needs a two-minute break to the, to the ladies' or men's room, we can do that. Um, I'd entertain a motion to go into executive session for personnel matter, to discuss personal matters of non-elected personnel in order to protect the privacy interests of the individuals to be discussed. Consultation with an attorney which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship in order to protect the privilege and the board's communications with its attorney on legal matters. This session will last no more than 30 minutes. No action will be taken. I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Sopcich and Tanya Wilson to join this session. Do I hear such a motion? So moved. Second. Second. I'm going to call Cook moved and Drummond seconded. We'll go back in executive session at 835. We will be out no later than 905 in this room. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. yes. Opposed? Yes. Motion carries. We have returned from executive session at uh, 9 o'clock, five minutes earlier than the executive session was moved to, to last. Um, do we have a motion? So moved to adjourn. No. Move. Oh. no. <laughs> Um, I will move that we uh, offer a Dr. Sopcic uh, the contract of which terms we'll present to him. And uh, uh, what's the last part of that? Uh, that's it. That's it. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Dr. Trustee Cook and seconded by Trustee Cross to present to Dr. Sopcic a contract uh, with the terms that will be included in the contract for him to review. Um, is there any further discussion? Not all in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries unanimously. Um, there is no further business. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. So moved. Second. Third. Second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor say yes. 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 Aye. Opposed, no. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you very much.